basic research in in the in the lab obviously we have to translate the research to the hospital okay suppose consider it may be a diagnosis it may be a gene therapy like that so translational research and then clinical research next slide okay so now i will talk about the i diseases and i genetics okay you you know 10th grade you you know what is the structure of the eye so this is the anterior chamber and this is the posterior chamber and this is lens and this is iris this is ciliary body this is cornea this is retina and this is macula this is optic now this optic now is taking the information to the brain is there any change in getting one of the thing definitely know you you are in trouble or you, you will get disease so this is nothing but um, this is infectious disease i'm not going to touch any infectious disease okay so the disease we can able to classify is a monogenic disease developmental disorder and then complex disorder we have 23 pairs of chromosome we are getting 23 from mother 23 for from father so when to once it is formed the zygote we have 46 chromosome okay so each chromosome be, is any defect it may form a some disease it may be a single gene single disease this is called a monogenic developmental disease in the sense at the during the development is there any deletion in the chromosome the baby born with some defective with the congenital form the complex is nothing but when you once you get older your problem in your genome as well as the constant exposure it may be a sunlight it may be another exposure to chemicals that you know it will change in your genome so that is called the complex your gene and the environment playing a major role for the disease okay so now i will give you some example so glaucoma okay because because of the lack of time i will tell you only the name of the disease glaucoma glaucoma is nothing but a kind of pressure in the eye so you you heard about the heart disease uh, uh, high tens uh, hypertension heart uh, pressure on the heart but even in the eye you know there is a pressure okay there is a pressure if, it, if the pressure comes you know it will affect the optic now you can you will lose the vision okay and then cataract this cataract the woman is prone to develop cataract than men because i uh, after maturation after uh, menopause there are lot of changes in the body in, for women that will trigger the cat cataract or constant exposure of the smoke if it's so people get cataract the lens is opaque right and then diabetic retinopathy i think we, we this morning they, you heard about diabetic consider is a india is the diabetic capital people are i mean having a diabetes if you are not maintaining your uh, sugar in your in your blood it will affect the eye again there is a genetic all the diabetic patients they won't have been affected by retina but some of the people affected by the reti diabetic retinopathy again because of the genetic genetic problem okay diabetic retinopathy all right and the refractory errors you know in the even in the young age myopia okay so if you see i think if you see do the dr work you are keep on watching the computer and everything even the cell phone you know obviously you will get the refractory errors or the myopia do please remember one thing your father and mother may be normal but you know the child having a myopia once the baby is myopia that is again it is a initiative to his baby please remember okay and then age led to macular degeneration that is nothing but the back of the eye there is a retina if you consume lot of fat that is accumulate in the macula so for that what you supposed to do you supposed to eat the colored vegetables yellow capsicum red capsicum strawberry blueberry whatever the fruits are I mean colored in nature if you consume you know that will that is nothing but a kind of xanthophyll the product is there xanthophyll that is nourish the uh, macula your vision is very good please eat healthy vegetables and colored vegetables colored fruits right so that's what i'm putting here okay this is one slide i can explain in uh, in one hour but you know lack of time i will briefly explain see your signature is written on your blood it meaning simply you draw your blood one drop of blood and then you screen the entire genome i know my genome i know my genome where exactly the mutation 
what kind of disease i prone for after some time i know so he if you are interested you draw a one drop of blood isolate the dna and then you know the entire uh, genome of yours okay then if you know the 19000 genes what kind of disease you are prone for if uh, i mean um, uh, sectivel told you know family history if the father is having the disease it mother having the disease he, he, he inherit the next generation but again you know you have to understand your genome okay so that's what i put it here i think it is it will take long lot of time i will stick with only one point see here it is called personalized medicine personalized medicine once you know your genome once you see the corona some people are i mean uh, uh, suffered some some of them are not that may be depending upon the strain and then it is integrated enter into the thing you know it will it will behave differently person to person okay so personalized you have to understand your own genome and then if the based on the change in the in your genome we can go for adopt your gene uh, therapy or any kind of treatment for cancer and other things so you were you were your, your genome you have to understand your genome for the right treatment that is called personalized medicine okay, all right so here i think we have all the instruments i told you when the patient because we are dealing one per day 3000 patient is coming to our hospital for eye checkup we are getting collecting so based on our research we draw the blood sometimes we will collect the tear sometimes we will collect the aqueous tumor whatever the biological that is called liquid biopsy whatever the liquid biopsy you want you can collect it and then you can go for research so here if you want to dna you can take dna if you want to protein you can take protein like that is so we have all the instruments the basic instrument high instrument now within a, uh, the entire genome if you want to target the entire 19000 we can do it or if you if you want to do the target sequencing only only 29 genes we can able to target that kind of machines we have to analyze the entire uh, blood, uh, the dna okay so these are the i think the lack of time see these are the diseases these are the common diseases in indian population these are the common diseases so these are the genes i told you 19000 genes in our body concerned with the eye diseases 600 genes are there each and every every gene you know this is all the genes responsible for diabetes and obesity so i produced more than 25 phd's i given different problems now we know the spectrum of genetic variation for a particular community or particular caste or in the southern indian population we know the spectrum okay so these are the genes these are the diseases we have the spectrum of genetic variation for eye diseases i think um, these are the things okay we will go to the experimental part okay i will i will take one one particular disease again this eye pressure this is the lens this is the lens this is the ciliary body this is iris the iris holding the lens the ciliary body the ciliary body it will secrete the aqueous tumor a kind of fluid that the fluid go in and out of the eye in and out out of the in the sense next see here the ciliary body secreting the aqueous tumor the aqueous tumor flowing like this it is draining out okay so i think in this morning they told about the I mean, extracellular matrix in the heart the same thing if the gene is mutated the protein protein it will interact together and then form a aggregate and then it will be it will block this particular network this the, this, this aqueous tumor flow should go like this that is the right flow if there is any mutation the pro the protein the normal protein abnormal protein form a extracellular matrix it will block it here that time it will build up the pr uh, pressure okay if you measure the eye pressure if it is less than 21 mm mercury your eye pressure is normal there is no damage in your optic nerve if it is increased more than 21 is a problem there is a keep on pressure you know in the eye the poor uh, the people you know they will lose vision concern with the glaucoma the patient they can't be able to see the periphery this window and the, the, that window they can't be able to see they can see only the the center if it, the condition is worse they will get only a tunnel vision like this okay so you the what we will recommend after 45 years you know you better to check your your intraocular pressure so if you know your own genome i think uh, you, you, there is no there is no point to worry 
there is a mutation is are uh, is there uh, negative or positive based on that you know you can change your lifestyle okay so this is a complex disease as i told you 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 screen the entire genome or a particular gene each and every disease having its own candidate gene and then you screen the candidate gene identify what kind of variation for that particular patient so this is a very very complex disease you if you screen you take 100 patients when you screen uh, the all the 100 patients for a particular gene only 5% of them are positive for the particular gene the 90% you know they have some other problem some other gene involved it means single gene disease or multiple gene diseases so that's what you know it's, the disease is very very complex to understand the mechanism okay so wha- what we what we did this is the entire gene this is the entire gene of that myosin the gene which is responsible for the glaucoma so we screened we identified these are the mutations these are the mutations so that is vary from p- p- family to family okay so i am going to focus only this glycine 367 arginine because the father is hetero you go and re- refer tonight what is heterozygous what is homozygous sakti will also mean the same thing in the in, in his talk what is heterozygous what is homozygous so here the father is heterozygous or homozygous if the patient is having heterozygous is a problem heterozygous in the sense one copy is normal one copy is defective if it's so they will end up the disease next slide we have to prove in a cloning strategy or you have to prove it in the animal model next slide okay so here what we did we have taken the entire myosin gene and then we clone into a vector once you clone it in a vector this is kind of in molecular biology gene cloning technology we cloned the pc dna 3 vector the entire gene of the myosin and then we transfected that plasmid into the perfect cells the this, this cells it this nothing but the the tm cells whatever the eye tissue you know we grown in the in vitro and then we have taken this cell transfect the plasmid and then you see the expression see here this is the untransfected we are not in transfected is a mock mock transfected this is the wild type wild type this is a mutant the patient having this mutation glycine we you and me having a glycine but the patient instead of glycine it is changed to arginine okay so here i want to tell you one thing some of the proteins if it is a pseudo gene pseudo gene the true gene it will produce a protein the protein sometimes it come out of the cell that is called extracellular protein some protein will stick inside the cell which is called intracellular protein some protein both intracellular and extracellular so here this protein is a both intracellular and extra, extracellular it, it means it's a leaky when you grow the cells in the medium if you take the medium and then measure the protein some of the protein express in the uh, out uh, in the in the leak in a uh, uh, i mean um, extracellular some of them are intracellular okay so like that you know we proved see here in the control there is no leakage see here this is the mutated one in the intracellular the all the protein sitting inside the cell that's what that's what the intensity is very high okay so the, all the proteins are sitting inside so through this is a kind of western blot analysis through this one you know we check through immunofluorescence as well as the western, western blot analysis yes this protein sticking inside the cell it is forming a complex this is this, this extracellular matrix blocking the message that's what people intra, uh, the intracellular pressure is increase affecting the optic nerve okay so i think this is my second phd student we what we will do we will take the when, the when you do the cataract surgery we will take some aqueous tumor from the control or from the glaucoma and then you test the same thing whether it is the right or wrong okay and then if if anyone is in the bioinformatics what we can do the the, the end product is a protein nobody knows the structure long long back we made a space filling model the entire protein where exactly mutation where is non pathogenic mutation is occurring in the protein you know we documented everything okay and then now i told you one particular gene is responsible for one particular disease sometimes we don't know what kind of gene is responsible for the disease 
what you have to do you have to collect thousand samples thousand samples either in your hospital or from outside or from internationally because we have lot of collaboration all over the world and then this is we, you have to screen the entire genome i told you all the 22 autosomes and xy chromosome you analyze each and every snp that is nothing but a kind of marker that is available in the genome you target everything and then you plot all the data based on the chromosome this is called you know all the see 21 22 chromosome all the data are we, we put it and then if you see here this one you know this one it is correlating a particular disease if anyone knows the statistic sometimes it may not be significant when you increase the sample size you will get the significance so like that you know we identified some of the candidate genes again responsible for the glaucoma okay so this is called genome wide association study gwas okay suppose uh, some disease it will occur only at the age of 70 what you have to do you collect all the 70 years old sample and then you can go for genome wide association study you screen the entire genome and then identify what kind of genetic marker is associated with the disease okay that is the, that is the strategy okay so this is i think uh, lack of time this is a particular this is a gene sixx again it is involved in the pathogenesis pathogenesis we screened the entire gene we identified yeah the mutations within the gene interestingly this is a entire if it is a please you have to read what is the um, the structure of the gene promoters what is the start codon stop codon what is intron exon everything so here the enhancer region see here this is the enhancer region the atct this is a, a gene a, a four base pair is deleted with that particular patient okay you have to analyze the samples critically and then then only you can able to identify what kind of variation we identify a four four base pair deletion interestingly in that particular four base pair deletion there are lot of transcription factor binding domain see here the atct is here within, within this region there are lot of uh, yeah, transcription factor binding domain is there so once that if there is a deletion it won't bind it won't synthesize the protein if it won't synthesize the protein is a problem to die that is the concept okay so this one we have to prove in the animal model that is called the biological relevance whatever you your, your concept is correct you have to prove it in the animal model so here again we have taken the vector we clone the gene and then we deleted the four four base pair now we have the wild type and then the deletion we have the two crunch sites we used some animal studies zebra fish this is very easy to handle is a small animal or you can go for a mouse model but you know we have the zebra fish model what you have to do this is the fertilize the egg see here this is a fertilize the egg you inject the your your gene as well as with the mrna and then you have a fourth generation some of them are wild type some of them express with the gene when you cross again you will get a homo sapiens fish okay completely the genome is changed it means whatever the four base for deletion that is there okay so here we we are working with eye hospital you have to you have to look at only the globe this globe this is the globe you have to see the globe you can see here this globe wild type is the normal in shape the globe this is a red fluorescent protein you see here the size is reduced the size is reduced when you take a sectioning and then with the specific antibody this is again the big glow for the wild type and then this is the mutant the glow size is reduced see here this is the retina the protein is expressing in the ganglion cell layer this amacanth layer is very is good easy but you see here there is no expression of the sx protein and then see here the amacanth layer is reduced based on this you know we proved yes this is the right candidate gene for this particular pro protein or the disease okay and then yesterday was a international women's day yes so whatever the mitochondria we have it is derived from you are just now you had a lunch you are
very good you are you have energy that's why you are getting sleep right you are consuming food after digestion you are getting energy through atp through atp okay so through atp you are getting energy the energy is coming from mitochondria mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell where we are getting from mitochondria we are getting all the mitochondria whatever we have either the boy or girl we are getting from mother consider this is the egg this is the sperm the egg having the mitochondria nucleus and everything this is sperm the sperm you know it will it will reach the egg it is also having the sperm it is also having the mitochondria but you know all the mitochondria is utilized only for the motility okay once it is to reach that particular egg the all the mitochondria is used you know then the sperm enter into the egg now whatever the mitochondria is there you know that is only in the egg again it is forming a zygote baby development so it means we have whatever the mitochondria we have it is derived from mother and then remember one thing i told you about the the genes and everything that is a nuclear gene cell nucleus and then in the cytoplasm there is a mitochondria mitochondria it is having its own dna and the nuclear dna is is a, it is having the 22 autosomes and xy chromosomes okay so the the uh, then lot of mutation happen in the mitochondria not in the nuclear genome okay sometimes there is a cross talk between the mitochondrial genome and nuclear genome because in the mitochondria only 37 genes are there and then it is produce only like only 13 peptide polypeptide right so please if, if you if you if you want to enrich your knowledge please go and read the mitochondria okay only 13 polypeptides those 13 polypeptides interacting with our 90000 chromosome this is the mitochondrial genome this is the nuclear genome there are 90000 genes are here if there is any uh, need definitely you know, it is interacting interacting together and then do lot of function so here i listed out lot of genes see here this is the structure of the mitochondria inner membrane outer membrane and chest cell each region you know it is having its own mitochondrial genome and it associate with these are the nuclear genome okay it meaning you, suppose you consider you are targeting one one disease one gene if it is negative you are to consider what is the role of the mitochondria what is the cross talk between the mitochondrial genome and nuclear genome all right so this is nothing but see here people are donating the eyes okay you sign a form after the death you know they will you can donate the eye so what we are doing you when you do research you supposed to get a sister where the exactly the pathogenesis is going on okay so what you can do you take the uh, fibroblast skin fibroblast uh, from that you know you can you can make into any kind of cell line using the that the, the all the four factors okay you can turn into the skin fibroblast to many 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 other thing but here we we want to know why some people are getting diabetes or diabetic retinopathy why why there is a difference okay for that we we are getting 3000 eye balls per year people are donating the eyes if you go to us one eye ball is equal to 400 dollars it's very expensive but you know we are getting lot of mean eye balls you have to use the that the autopsy or biopsy perfectly for your research you have to ask a question like that okay where exactly pathogenesis like that so here we collected some 2000 eye balls and then we segregated who is diabetes who is diabetic retinopathy who is normal four categories from that you the extract the rna and then from that you now what you supposed to do what are the genes up regulating what are the genes are down regulating for a particular disease you can compare di- what is the relation what is the scenario for the diabetes what is the body reti- di- diabetic retinopathy like that you know you when you compare you know you can come up with a kind of biomarker that is the right word what is the biomarker responsible for the diabetic retinopathy who will turn from diabetic to diabetic retinopathy like that you know there are lot of thing you know we can do okay so this is and then for the biomarkers it may be a ethnic specific 
see, I will tell you an example. We have hospital all over Tamil Nadu, Salem, Coimbatore, Madurai. See, some of the, some of the cataract, you know, the cataract, you know, very hot, some of them are very soft, the color is different, region wise. We, we have to look into carefully, is there, what is the role of that gene? Or is there any environmental factors of it? Once the cataract is become hard, you have to, the post-surgery complication is very high. Okay? So everything, what I'm trying to say is, your signature is written on your blood. Based on the gene mutation, people are getting the disease. That is the ultimate thing. Okay? Uh, okay. See, what we did, I told you, 19,000 genes are there in our body. 600 genes is responsible for eye disease. We identified more than four candidate genes in the world. You know, we only reported, yes, this is a candidate gene for the, this particular eye disease. Okay, for, for that, what are you supposed to do? You collect, in India, people, especially in rural people, places, people are not migrating. If you go to U.S., within their lifetime, they are migrating to eight places. It is very difficult to trace them. But here, if you go to the remote places, five or six generations, they are living in the same place, lot of consanguineous marriages, and then your five gen you can get five generation family. generation family, you can collect a huge number of samples. From that, you know, we can able to identify the candidate gene. Okay, I think, uh, see, uh, if, I, if I talk for one slide, I can talk one, one day. Okay, maybe with the permission of Dr. Kogila, Maybe I'll come another day, I'll speak in detail, okay, with, with the non-stop for nine to six. I, I can, I, I can able, able to do that. Lack of time, or, or, or you go and uh, you open the PubMed, type my name, Dr. P. Sudharish Sudharishan, you pull down my 150 papers, you read, you'll get treated easily. All right, the gene, I'll end up with only one gene therapy, I mean, uh, the previous speaker told about adenovirus virus. That is nothing but a kind of virus. You take that virus, you clone the normal gene because the patient is having the mutation. We are, now we are developing a kind of virus, a kind of virus, this is adenovirus virus. You put that gene, okay? The patient DNA is, I mean, uh, mutated. You, you take that adenovirus viral virus, you can inject here. Subcritically, this is the eye, back of the eye. You put it here. And then using the homologous recombination, you know, it will turn into this defective gene is replaced, normal gene is attached. Then after two or three months, the, the, the visual activity is very high for the patient. Next slide. Okay, see, this experiment is conducted in uh, a dog model. The, the, dog, the dog was blind. It is they conducted and then they got the vision back to the dog. The dog in the US, in the US. This dog is died last year. It came in the newspaper, uh, you know, the main dog, you know, used to help cure by the blindness in, in human dies at the age of 12. See, we, we are conducting the experiment to the animals, you know, that's what, you know, they came in the newspaper, you know, like that. And then what is the age? You have to compare uh, the animal age with the human. If it is a 12, 12 years old, you multiply into 7. One year old dog is equal to 7 years of human. Okay, if you can calculate all organism, there is a formula. Okay, okay, this is the baby, and very recently they treated the virus in Canada. Okay, this is in May 30th. This baby is affected by that particular uh, 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 gene, and then they put that virus, and then now the baby is having the vision. This is in Canada. So we are trying to get the approval from ICMR. Once we have the patient, once the ICMR is approved, now we will go for treatment. Okay, this is the drug, this, the, the um, gene therapy is very expensive and then you can treat the patient, okay. I think I can stop it here and then uh, this is the, this is the, uh, okay. So this is, uh, you pay only uh, like 18,000 rupees or 30,000 rupees, your genome is ready. Now there is a paper in nature even if you pay hundred hundred dollars, meaning ten thousand rupees, your genome is ready. Don't see horoscope. Jada line will pakadiya. Better to read your DNA. If you want to live longer, 
please read your DM. Okay? I think these are our publications. I think thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring session. Your insights have truly enriched our event. We are now moving to the final session of the day. To introduce our keynote speaker of this session, I invite Ritanya from Second CLT. First and foremost, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our chief guest, Dr. K. N. Shiva, principal scientist, who graciously accepted our invitation to be with us. He is a true inspiration for everyone, and we are honored to have him with grace us with his presence. Dr. K. N. Shiva is a principal scientist in the Division of Crop Production and Post-Harvest Technology at ICAR, National Research Center for Banana, Trichrapalli, Tamil Nadu. He completed his MSc and PhD from Premier Institute at ICAR Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. Dr. Shiva has more than 25 years of research and extension experience in horticulture crop and its post-harvester technology. He has published over 75 research articles in Drefford International and National Journals and contributed many review articles, book chapters and popular articles. His words of wisdom and encouragement will undoubtedly motivate our student. Once again, we welcome you, sir. Uh, for the nice introduction about me, whether I deserve it or not, I know end of this lecture. Okay, uh, all the speakers, earlier speakers, they, they, they have done uh, justice for their uh, medical field. I am not from the medical field. I am only food for thought. That's all. Okay, so let me have my first slide because time is very limited. Just uh, let me go through the slides very fast. So the title itself says Millers and Horticulture for Health and Wealth with reference to banana. Next slide, please. Yes, sir. Not working. You know about him, he is a Hippocrates father of modern medicine. So the Dr. Swaminathan, M. S. Swaminathan, you might have heard about him, uh, one or two months back he expired. He was the father of Green Revolution in India. He only brought uh, Green Revolution in 1965-66, high yielding varieties of wheat and rice through which we could attain at present 320 million tons in food grain production. So that's what the, this says. Okay. Just few slides about the millers, because last year we celebrated uh, International Year of Millers. I guess uh, because of its reasons being it is uh, food security, nutrition, as well as uh, sustainable agriculture. Okay. So why, what for? What are the millers available? Because millers are the poor man's food, and it gives lot of nutrients, lot of vitamins, minerals, equivalent to fruits and vegetables. It is called protective foods, we can say. Similarly, you can see these are the major millers. These are the minor millers. You can have uh, pictures of these uh, millers. So what for the millet for the future? Why we celebrate the millets as International Year of Millets? Because it's rich in protein, rich in dietary fiber. Morning we are talking about the thing. We take uh, uh, more of carbohydrates, less of dietary fiber. But we should take more of dietary fiber, less of carbohydrates, rich in protein as well as uh, you can say good quality fat. These are the advantages going for the millets for the future. You can see the uh, lot of minerals also it can. So uh, actually some of the minerals like anemic, people are generally, women are uh, prone to anemic. So iron is one of the rich component, rich mineral present in the uh, millets, minor millets. Then apart from that, you can see other millets or other minerals and vitamins also present in this. Uh, these are the some of the millets and its ingredient products and all the nutritious ingredients given. My slides will be available. Anybody wants, you can take. Actually, no problem. Due to short of time, just rush up the slides. Yeah, these are the nutrient profile. It has been given for the different millets. You can take it and use it. So millets for the health, what for it is? You are rich in high fiber and macro micronutrients, overcome the problem of essential uh, amino acid profile, rich in amino acid profile, high fiber and protein, 
and it's all, it also causes some of the lifestyle issues like diabetics, obesity, high blood pressure, and cholesterol. Good for heart health. We are talking about since morning we are hearing about the heart diseases. So we can some of the things we can uh, reduce through the uh, billets we take, reduce the uh, low density lipoproteins as well as triglycerides. Good accident, anti-accident properties like pani pilans. Then health fasting food like used during the fasting. This is one of the things mainly used during the uh, our health. Then we come to the horticulture crops, a source of protective food for human health. We, we call it as a rainbow revolution because uh, earlier our speaker Sundaresan was telling that uh, colorful fruits and vegetables, generally colorful fruits and vegetables are good for health. Fruits and vegetables are called protective foods because it's very good source of vitamins and minerals. Similarly, mushroom, when you go to the colored mushrooms are highly dangerous, poisonous. So don't take colored mushrooms. You take even mushrooms are very good source of protein, vitamins, and minerals. But the colored mushrooms are dangerous or poison, we can say, particularly forest mushroom. But fruits and vegetables, colored fruits and vegetables are good, rich in, uh, in anthocyanins, rich in carotenoids, flavonoids, so many properties it has, medical properties it has. We can see horticulture comparison of a lot of the field, fruits, vegetables, plantation spices, medicinal aromatic plants, and uh, spices, floriculture and landscaping gives a lot of uh, uh, aesthetic value for the humankind. So like it contains a lot of fields, including postal technology and mushroom. See, fruits. Fruits is a very good source of, what is the major nutrient presence in the fruits and vegetables? Water. Water is the major nutrient. Next to that only we call it about the vitamins, minerals, and organic acids, and so on and so forth. Okay, you can see the slides, the Raju, what are the major uh, nutrients presence in the fruits. Similarly, in the vegetables also. So you can see a lot of uh, fresh juices generally rich in uh, for good health, be health care of activities are being done by the fresh juices. As much as possible, better to take with the skin, better to take the whole fruit or whole vegetables because when you take as a juice, most of the times you will be missing out the dietary fiber. Okay, so better to take the whole fruits and vegetables as much as possible. That's good for our health. So anti-cancer, many fruits are there having a lot of anti-cancer properties like broccoli and sour soup like kind of fruits having a lot of anti-cancer properties, cherries, berries. You can see a list of a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables which are having anti-cancer properties. Then uh, proverb versus new verb actually, you can say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Similarly, many things have been given here, you can see. A uh, tulsi leaf a day can, you can prevent cancer. One cup milk a day, no bone problem. Similarly, you can say three liters of water per day, no diseases. These are the natural, natural, but you can say like that. Okay, so important horticulture. We have a lot of variety of produce available in the uh, horticulture sector. Then you can say it is uh, very good for nutritional security. So far we attained the food security. We are producing 316 million tons. We have very good buffer, buffer uh, stock in the food grain production. But uh, horticulture crops production, particularly fruits and vegetables, have production has surpassed the food grain production. We are producing around 360 million tons fruits and vegetables and other horticulture crops. So we are moving from food security to the nutritional security, which is can be contributed by the fruits and vegetables, particularly, particularly horticulture sector. There you can see the source of medicine, particularly Ayush, Ayurveda, Yunani, and Siddha, Yoga, Naturopathy, and Homeopathy. Oh, even though Homeopathy is a Western medicine, even though it has been included in say, one of the Ayush system, a source of this all medicines comes from horticulture, you can see. Then economic proportion, higher returns per unit area, employment generation, you can see, we horticulture crops can generate more employment than any other crops, you can see. Then you can have a lot of significant high calories, uh, and also having very good uh, protective foods, health, wealth, hygiene, and happiness. Everything can be given by the horticulture crops, particularly fruits and vegetables. Farm to fork is a concept of rural area. When you can say terrace to table is nowadays urban area. Nowadays, many terraces and uh, uh, multi-story building, they are growing vegetables, fruits, and all very commonly. Vegetables are grown in uh, hydroponic systems, soilless culture also. This all promotes for the health and wealth of our uh, community. So you yeah, see, see, I told you protective foods, fruits and vegetables. There are two types of fruits available. One is climatic fruits, another one is climatic fruits. The fruits which are removed, detached from the mother plant, again you start ripening every place, every physiological and biochemical changes takes place. Those fruits are climatic fruits where respiration is very high and also ethylene release also very high. Ethylene is uh, uh, one hormone responsible for the ripening of the fruits. Another category comes non-climatic fruits. You can see the strawberry, and grapes kind of uh, fruits where after detachment from the mother plant, not much changes takes place. So these are the difference between the climatic and non-climatic fruits. So again, we have given the nutrient constituents of the fruit and vegetables, which is good for human health and their uh, 
courses are given. Just it's a very big list. I can't read it out. You can use it for your uh, course material. Okay. So similarly, vitamins and minerals and pigments and uh, so many so, so many things are available. Just you can use it. And then some of the basic uses are spices. Spices gives very good food adjuvants, gives aroma and flavor. Spices gives aroma and flavor, whereas condiments like uh, turmeric and uh, ginger all gives very good taste. Okay, these are difference between uh, uh, spices and condiments. You can see the different kind of spices, condiments, medicinal plants, and their uses being listed out here. Comes to banana, it is a wonder, it is a poor man's fruit, it is a Adam's apple, it is a instant energy provider, it is a wonder fruit, it is one among the three fruits, Mukanigri Londri, Ma Pala Valai. Okay, so you can see the leaf. Leaf is a very good uh, hygienic bioplate. It is having a lot of medicinal properties, rich in vitamins, minerals, and uh, also it is having a lot of uh, tannins polyphenols, anti-accident properties it has. That's why when you keep hot food and the banana leaf and take, it gives many of your ailment diseases and also your hair remain will black. You can protect from your skin disease also. So a lot of advantages also. As Sad told, if I talk about the medicinal properties of banana leaf, I can talk for one hour. So that much uh, advantage it has. Recently, banana leaf is getting exported to the foreign countries. Very high demand is there, banana leaf. Then uh, unripe green bananas, we can make a lot of products. Ripe banana, then uh, spidunkil, very good source of fiber. Then you can say made food, rich in iron, rich in dietary fiber, rich in uh, uh, other components also. So then uh, center core stem, particularly the stem, which is having that center portion, white color portion, generally is having a property to solve kidney stone. We have prepared what a central core stem juice, it is having, we add ginger, it's very good, uh, good for digestion, also very good refreshing drink. Another highly moving, one of the product is uh, your uh, central core stem juice actually. Then you can say, uh, then even in the calm, calm also we have very good uh, source of uh, starch actually. We can make a lot of products from that. Then we can classify in the banana. Generally, people banana means they know one. Actually, there are three types of bananas are there. One is banana means ripe fruit rich in sugar. It's called banana. Next is coming in plantain. Plantain is rich in starch as well as vitamin A, like nandran. Third category comes culinary or vegetable purpose, like mondan, we can make some curries and all. So three types of classification is there in banana. Banana is called kalpaduru, like coconut palmara we say karpa viriksham. So banana is called kalpaduru because that means every part of the plant can be utilized. Having a lot of medicinal properties, nutraceutical properties it has. This is a multifaceted plant, used as a fruit. Some of the Af African countries and Asian countries they use as a food, and ripe green banana use as a food. It is a vegetable. It is a fiber we can extract, use it for textiles and uh, garments making. It is having a lot of medicinal and nutritional properties. You can see the nutritive value of the banana and plantain. Water is the major source, followed by carbohydrates. Rich in ripe banana rich in sugars, whereas unripe banana, plantain is rich in starch. Then it is not a good source of protein, almost 1.2 percent on average you have in protein. Almost divide of fat, it's good for uh, cancer patients. So cancer patient can take banana very well. But the only thing should be, diabetic patients should be very careful. They should not take the ripe banana or overripe banana because it is coming under the high glycemic index category. Okay, but apart from that, banana is very good source of potassium. It contains around 450 milligram per 100 gram edible portion. Potassium is very good for uh, uh, brain cell development of children. Besides, banana is having very good for mood enhancer. It converts the tryptophan into serotonin. It is very good mood enhancer, happiness inducer. Continuously you take banana, they will quit smoking also. So like that, it having a lot of properties. Then vitamin A, particularly nandran and red bananas, having vitamin A, which is uh, rich in carotenes like carrots. We are also developing some varieties. Biofortivated varieties rich in iron as well as uh, rich in vitamin A. It's going to be released very soon. Then also a very good source of 4 to 8 percent dietary fiber it contains. Apart from that, it's very good anti accent properties, particularly total flavonoids. Still having more of anti accent properties than the pulp, whatever eat. You can see the different por proportions in which it is having the nutrients. Okay? Then you can see the different health benefits of the banana, starting from everything. So start from the uh, even uh, cardiovascular protection to dietary fiber, and so protects eye cells rich in vitamin A. That uh, if you take after food, you take two one banana, it your constipation problem is solved. So like it uh, improves your elimination, lot of things it having. Then the such kind of banana is called overripe banana. If you have it is called brown spot or senescent spot. Such kind of banana is good for the uh, butter. It prevents uh, cancer because the tumor necrosis factor it contains. It prevents cancer. Henceforth, don't neglect such kind of fruit. Only aged people. That means the diabetic patients should not eat. Other patients, other people can take. 
<coughs> India is the largest producer of banana in the world, 8.5 million tons from the 35, 8.5 lakh hectares. We produce 35 million tons. We are leading producer in the world. We have the, some of the traditional varieties, what we have here, you can see the Puvan variety and uh, Nandran and Mondan. The Nandran is a variety, wonder variety. It can make a lot of value-added products from banana, rich in uh, carotins, rich in uh, uh, resin starch also. The resin starch means very good for a di particularly diabetic patients. We can make a lot of flour-based products we can make out of Nandran. And Mondan is a culinary variety. Then Grand Nine, Red Banana. Red Banana is very good source of anthos uh, uh, carotins as well as also good for the persons who are having calcareous fur, okay, and also good for pine starch. So this, uh, we can see a lot of varieties we have in our, uh, we this Karparavalli, one of the sweetest variety, highly sweetest variety called in Tain, Tain Walling in Tamil actually. So it's called Karparavalli in a general name, common name. This is having very rich in sugar, we make, we use it for making a lot of uh, uh, ripe banana based products. Some traditional varieties which are very much aromatic varieties, very flavorful varieties like Naipu and then you can see the Malawalai Palam. Kill banana, particularly uh, Virupaksi Tirmalai. They make Panjamaratham in uh, Murugan Temple. Then uh, there is one variety called Meligidari Valai. Meligidari Valai. It's called uh, uh, Pisang Lili. In the name of Kaveri, it's grown in the hilly areas of uh, uh, Kerala. One fruit, if you keep it in one room, room will be entirely flavorful and also very tasty variety. This is, this is low glycemic in the variety, even diabetic patients cake. Neandaran and uh, uh, this Pisang Lili variety, diabetic patient cake, because low in sugar actually. Uh, recently, a lot of intelligent packaging is uh, coming up because packaging is very important one to attract the consumer. So, again, three sensor based uh, packaging is available. As long as uh, the fr fresh, the commodity is fresh, it shows green color. When the commodity is uh, going to be uh, spoiled soon, it is maybe showing orange color. As well as the commodity is spoiled, means it shows red color. So, that kind of intelligent packaging, packaging is coming up nowadays in the meat and uh, fish, and also it is going to come in the even fruits and vegetable sector also. When you use the uh, Ripening. Generally, people say there is a lot of problem in ripening. Uh, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, they banned uh, this kind of chemicals. Calcium carbide, stone, for ripening purpose is banned. It is uh, inducing cancer. Then comes ethanol or ethipon. It is a solution, either spray or dip it. It is also, it should, be, should not be used. It is banned for ripening purpose. Then smoking is a hygiene, unhygienic problem. So we can use only ethylene gas, naturally available in the banana, releases in small quantity. We can use artificial injection of the ethylene gas in the chamber, we can use it for ripening purpose. That is only the gas permitted. Then you can see the different stages of ripening. This is, this is the ideal stage for edible. Many people uh, can ask diabetic patients, sir, the diabetic patients cannot take banana. You can take the stage and five. You can see central portion is yellow, male top, and bottom portion is green in color. Pedicil and top portion. In this stage, you can take banana. Sometimes even uh, green unripe banana, you can cut into pieces, boil it, water boil it, and you can take it also. So diabetic patient, the fifth stage they consume, not in sixth and seventh stage, okay? So we can make a lot of value-added products from each and every part. Just a glimpse of the products from the green bananas, unripe banana. Chips, everybody knows. We nowadays, recently, we produce the low-fat chips, vacuum fry chips, in which uh, chips are made with the very good color and also rich in nutrients. The vacuum frying is one, it is the oil, oil is boiled less than 100 degrees centigrade, it is safer for consumption, oil, uh, that oil can be utilized more than 50 times, that is the advantage. But now normally deep fat frying, the oil is, it not, should not be used not more than three times, because this fat is transferred to uh, trans fat, it is induces cancer. Then uh, we can make, we are, we are also making low fat chips meant for uh, uh, heart problem patients, then we can make flavorful, colorful chips, we can make it. So different flavors and color and uh, brands are available in chips. Then banana flour is one of the ideal products for the diabetic patient, you can say. We make a lot of products from the uh, banana flour, particularly North Kannada, Kannada area. They make a lot of products from banana flour. Even uh, monkey birth program, Manadin Kural program, even uh, Prime Minister has mentioned about the banana flour is good for uh, diabetic patients and also very good for uh, home scale production. Banana flour is very good uh, source uh, for making even banana starch. We can extract around 15-20% uh, resistant starch from banana. It is having uh, uh, very good anti-diabetic properties. So that we can utilize. So it is also gluten free. Banana flour is also gluten free. That is another advantage compared to the wheat flour. It is having a celiac disease, a major problem. We can make a lot of products from this uh, banana flour. 
Nandran is the ideal variety for making flour. You can make biscuits, you can make flour based, and peel powder based product. Yeah, peel is very good source of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidant properties. So, peel powder can be utilized for making many flour based products. Bakery products, we can make it. And also, low glycemic index uh, bakery products, we can make it using the resin starch. Then, kurkure, then pasta, noodles. And the resin starch is one which is very good for a diabetic patient particularly type 2 and type 3. We can make a lot of products out of the resin starch. You had only 5 gram resin starch for the either chapati preparations or the uh, idli dosa preparation. Maybe within another 2-3 uh, months, you can sugar level can be come down. That kind of things also. That similarly, is jackfruit powder also. Then you can make sauce and uh, pickles. Uh, these are the products from unripe banana. From ripe banana, we can make products. This one of the products is called basil seed suspended. Uh, Fruit beverage, banana fruit beverage, basil seeds, nothing but tulsi seeds, very good, uh, rich in uh, omega-3 fatty acid, uh, very good in glucose regulator. So it can be used as a uh, suspended manner in the fruit juice. We can make, it, we can promote this. Then we can, yeah, these are basil seeds suspended uh, fruit beverage. We can make very, very good uh, milkshake, banana milkshake like mango and avocado milkshake. We can make from banana, deheaded banana, very good source of uh, energy, instant energy provider. This uh, once you once you ripe it actually ripe after ripening you can't keep the fruits for not more than three or five days. But you can once you dry it, deheated it, and you can keep it for up to six months or one year. This can be given to even children, sports person, defense from mountaineers, drinkers, anybody. This is a very good uh, fruit. We can make even chocolate also from the ripe banana. Make it slice small small pieces. Put put chocolate coating. You can promote. So some companies are promoting these products in even Amazon also. This is banana bar or leather. We can make it. Sweet chutney from banana, ripe banana, jam, jelly, uh, sip up kind of products. We can very children very like they like very much. Even alcoholic beverages like banana wine, banana beer, and if natural fruit vinegar. We can make it. Whatever you use in the chemical uh, in the home scale, on mostly three to four percent acetic acid chemical. But we can from ripe banana we can make a natural fruit vinegar. Then uh, muffins, cakes, and even palampuri. Kerala this is a favorite fruit. Uh, food item actually. So ripe banana, they can make palamburi. We make some products, uh, instant mix uh, to reduce the uh, uh, um, oil absorption. Even ripe banana, you can make a powder, homemade ripe banana powder. So you can use it for making uh, like jaggery, or you can use it in the confection industries and as well as in the bakery products making. Then even banana is a very good source of uh, prebiotic food actually, green bananas. So that also can be possible, you can use it for various purposes. Even other parts of the banana flower, rich in iron and dietary fiber, potassium, we can make very good toku. Nothing but toku is nothing but put uh, grind it in the grind form, it is called a uh, paste like form, it is called toku. Small pieces is called pickle, that's all. This is very good uh, uh, delicious food items. We can budgie, we can make a lot of uh, even tendal core stem, white stem, we can make actually uh, candy. Then uh, Stem juice, we can, uh, Sandakur stem juice, we can make this, uh, you can flavor, you can add some kind of ginger also. Very good refreshing thing, good for digestion, good for dissolving kidney stone. So these are the three advantages it has. Then you can make jelly, uh, even ripe banana powder, you can, uh, uh, the Sandakur stem, you can powder it, you can make it in instant, instant ice cream mix, so that the melting capacity will uh, come down, and also in increases the consistency, consistency of the ice cream, we can make very good uh, pickle also from that. Even peel also, we can make a lot of very good uh, pickle. So it contains a lot of nutrients. So peel, we can make extract uh, pectin and cellulose. We can think of different kind of aspects for a healthy point of view, different flavors and uh, functional foods, many things can be made gluten-free and uh, uh, low diet glycemic index products, we can make it from the banana flour and uh, resin starch. Even you can make uh, rava and grits from banana, and red green banana, we can make Upma, Kesari, Laddu kind of things you can make. So snack foods, you can make it from banana flour. The taste of health, happiness and healthiness, you can use ripe banana powders and basil seeds suspended. Central core stem, we can use it for dissolving kidney stone and other purpose. Nowadays, we are making a low sodium pickle. That's good for the, particularly for uh, uh, cardiac problem patients, uh, heart problem patients. And uh, leaf is a very good industry. We are used to, leaf is used in the aromatherapy like uh, herbal spices. So even having a lot of uh, traditional uses it has. 
So come to the conclusion, you can see the articles say the potential sources to eliminate uh, malnutrition, alleviate poverty, alleviate uh, poverty, and uh, food crops are good for food security, whereas articles say crops can be good towards the nutritional security. Then articles say crops are called generally protective foods because they are rich in vitamins, minerals. Very good scope for development, uh, diversification of allied products from um, uh, articulture, and also specific target-oriented uh, diabetic, obesity, other diseases and disorders can be need to be developed by increasing with the uh, biotic compounds. Possible even the obesity problem, they have on uh, Garcinia indicum, cocum juice that is having hydroxy citric acid, good for ob obesity patients also. So like that, we can so it is having lot of founders in this. And we have an agribusiness incubation center. We are giving a uh, platform for the entrepreneurs. We have common incubation centers. We promote uh, large scale entrepreneurs also. Okay, so eat your banana your day and you lead a happy life. It is what I want to say. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any questions? Something? One or two? Not much. Till they make the stage meant for uh, validity function. <laughs> Till that time, you can ask one or two questions to anybody. Okay, if no questions, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I previously thank uh, Dr. Sridhyavi, Madam, Head of the Department of Food Science Nutrition, giving me the opportunity, and also the uh, Dr. NGP Arson Science College Chairman and the Managing Director of this uh, KMCG Group of Institutions for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your insightful words. We are now moving to the culminating event of the day. I request the dignitaries to proceed to the dais. Good afternoon, honorable dignitaries, most valued professors, staffs, and dazzling students gathered here. I would like to welcome you heartily to the valediction session. Good evening, everyone. Esteemed guests, distinguished teachers, and my dear friends, I stand before you today to welcome you all to the valedictory function of a one-day international conference on translational research towards attaining good health and well-being for sustainable development. It's truly inspiring to see such a diverse and dedicated group of individuals gathered here today. On behalf of the organizing departments, it's my privilege to welcome you all to this valedictory function. I have great pleasure and honor to welcome our chief guest, Dr. P. Sundaresan, senior scientist, molecular genetics, Aravind Medical Research Foundation, Madurai, and Dr. K. N. Shiva, Principal Scientist, ICAR, NRC for Banana, Trichy. Next, I extend my heartfelt welcome to our most respected chairman, Dr. Nallaji Palaniswamy, and Madam Secretary, Dr. Daumani D. Palaniswamy, in their absentia. It's truly an honor to welcome Dr. P. R. Muthuswamy, Director of Academics, to be here today. I am very delighted to welcome our beloved principal, Professor K. Ramamurthy, and Vice Principal, Dr. S. Saravanan, to this occasion. I am glad to welcome various heads of the department and teaching faculties. Last but not least, 
I express my greetings and warm welcome to our fellow students and students from various institutions. Once again, I welcome you all to the valedictory function. Thank you. Awards and achievements are not just symbols of recognition, but also the fact that keeps us motivated to go further and better. With this quote, I invite the guest, Dr. P. Sundaresan Sir, to hand over the prizes to the prize winners. The third prize goes to Dr. P. Prema Gauri, Associate Professor, Department of Food Science and Nutrition, PhD College of Arts and Science. The second prize goes to Mr. Avinash Kumar, PhD Research Scholar, KMCH Research Foundation. And the first prize goes to Mega G, Department of Biochemistry, from Bharatiar University. By acknowledging the good and in expressing our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Let's now invite Ms. Shruti from 2nd MSc Chemistry to propose the vote of thanks. A warm good evening to one and all present here. The roots of all goodness lie in the soil of appreciation. It is my privilege to record the vote of thanks in this genial occasion, jointly organized by the departments of biochemistry, food science and nutrition, lab, clinical lab technology, chemistry, and medical physics. I convey my sincere gratitude to all the keynote speakers of the day, Professor Shaktivel Sadayapan, Professor Timothy A. McKenzie, Professor Jonathan Kirk, Dr. P. Sundaresan, and Dr. N. Shiva for the informative and useful sessions. On behalf of the organizing committee, I am very much thankful to our respected chairman, Dr. Nallaji Palniswami, sir, and Madam Secretary, Dr. Tavamani D. Palniswami, ma'am, in their absence, for their constant support and guidance. I express my profound thanks to Dr. P. P. R. Muttuswami, sir, Director of Academics, for his valuable support and guidance. Thank you, sir. It is my pleasure to thank our principal, Professor Dr. K. Ramamurthy, sir, for his constant support and encouragement. Thank you, sir. I express my profound thanks to our to our vice principal, Dr. S. Saravanan, sir. Thank you, sir. I profound my thanks to the deans of various portfolios and deans of various departments for their guidance and support. I record my sincere thanks to the conveners, secretaries, and members of the organizing committee for their hard work and support. My heartfelt thanks to all the teaching and non-teaching staffs of all the departments. Last but not the least, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the students and participants from various colleges for their patience and cooperation. Thank you all for making this event successful. Once again, thank you all. May I now invite our college choir for the national anthem. Bye. 
Thank you, dignitaries.